Alright, so we're here to manage IQ. Yes. So what do you do? Uh, my name is Bill Holgerson. I'm the enterprise architect for uh, Manage IQ. And I, today I'm going to show you uh, our uh, inside product, uh, configuration management for virtual infrastructures. Alright. Okay. So let's check it out. So one of the things that, that we want to remember is, is as Insight actually is the view into the virtual infrastructure. And in order to do that, the first place that we have to start is with discovery. So we need to get the assets actually brought into the infrastructure to, to bring that thing. There are several ways to do that. Um, the, these are uh, being able to go across multiple management infrastructures, such as virtual centers and, and, and multiple virtual centers. Uh, being able to actually uh, discover straight on, on the network and bring those assets in, as well as uh, um, being able to just simply add them from a list of, of known infrastructures. Um, these all would be examples of actually bringing uh, assets in that are known. And these assets are known by, by the hosts. One of the most dangerous VMs in the system is the one that doesn't have a host affiliation. Those, those VMs that have been archived off, those ones that haven't been running for a very long time. And what we also uh, actually bring into play is the ability to, to inventory and bring in repositories that may have a host of virtual machines that you know, haven't been run for a very long time or have no affinity. They wouldn't have a view to the management infrastructure. Um, being able to take a look at these assets and their relationships uh, as we go through the pieces and being able to tell exactly what is this VM is comprised of. Uh, users, groups, patches, those types of things. Um, every bit of information that you're seeing here is gleaned from the virtual machine when it's not running. Nor is there any agents that actually pollute the VM environment. So uh, we're actually thinking that management needs to move up into the fabric. And uh, that's what you're going to see here is almost all of this information was pulled from a virtual machine without it running. So as you can see here, this actually... Yeah, just take it. Okay. As you can see. As you can see, this is an, uh, uh, an actual example of a Microsoft container. Uh, this actually is a virtual appliance that was pulled down. You could pull virtual appliances uh, of many, many different operating systems. But a good security thing is how many people in production would actually take a virtual appliance with 25 users in it, right? So what this is actually giving us is an example of saying you're going to bring in virtual appliances. Maybe you want to take a look at them before you put them into production. After you have discovery, now what ends up happening is it brings into the landscape of having all of your virtual assets available for use. And as you can see from here, um, we're showing a, a host of different virtual machines that are of different container types. This happens to be VMware, Microsoft, Zen. And what you're looking at uh, in this icon, we call this the virtual thumbnail. And this virtual thumbnail actually will come out and give us a a whole host of information very quickly into what exists in the virtual enterprise. Not only the operating type, the state of the virtual machine, the container at which it's living in, the number of snapshots that happen to be available for uh, management on this machine. So let's take a look at a, a couple things. As we drill in, there are many, many relationships that actually come with a virtual machine. It's host affinity, right? Is it a member of... Uh, 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 management uh, domains such as virtual center. Um, what we're actually going to see is uh, that this uh, this VM has has a genealogy. In other words, virtual environments allow us to clone, to template, to bring up items such as this. These uh, we're going to be able to tell you where it came from. So as you clone, as you define virtual machines from. Uh, uh, templates and those types of items, uh, we actually can walk this up. So as you can see from here, this is a template that's gleaned another template. Uh, this template actually has, has many other templates that it's generated. By being able to bring this information in, I can now take a look at this entire tree of, of assets and I now can compare them amongst themselves to find out what items have actually changed. Uh, and, and by doing this, I now can say, how do they, how do they exist in, in reference to themselves? 
or to their other members, such as web pools and those types of things. If the virtual machines, you know, act and, and react together, such as a web pool, I may have some that aren't behaving the same way. This is going to tell me where the changes have actually occurred. Comparison amongst, this is actually a VM to VM comparison example. There are other ways to take a look at uh, managing those portions. And, and that happens to be uh, a comparison of information of this VM to itself over time. So as the, as the virtual machine exists, we may want to start taking a look at the actual capabilities of pulling back drift information. And this is, is good information from the perspective of if I have a maintenance window, I may want the system to, to rescan and take a checkpoint of this virtual machine as time goes on. And actually, the system will come back and tell me all the changes that actually happen in, in the system. And in here, we're showing the actual differences that have happened to this virtual machine over time and when. In this case, these are two users that were actually applied to the system. They didn't exist originally. Now they actually exist, and they still exist as of the last scan. Same thing with software. It doesn't have to be added. It could have been you know, taken away. This may be why this virtual machine isn't behaving any longer. Somehow some software got uninstalled from this virtual machine. Being able to take this type of information and apply it to a host, now that I have all this knowledge, I actually can bring about control and control the environment might be uh, requirements. In order for a certain virtual machine to be started in my environment, it must meet a set of requirements and patches, those types of things. This is where we would move to the next level. Insights, the first knowledge. Control would be now applying the information that you've gotten from that place. Uh, who would you say uh, needs to use this, and who is using it already? Well, currently, right now, it's probably uh, targeted towards the larger enterprise. Um, however, it's delivered as a virtual appliance, so we're seeing a lot of interest uh, from the SMB type market, right? So, it actually is targeted at just about anybody who who is coming into the virtualized world. They need to keep a hold of what that is and how they're going to do it. So, how much does it cost to get it, or how does it work? Uh, well, it's a different it? type of pricing yeah. pricing scheme. I would say the average starting point is about fifteen thousand dollars. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you.